But new in V7, we've actually added physically based materials to Rhino, and that adds a, a, a kind of previously unseen level of realism, and we can demonstrate that by going back to rendered mode. I'm actually going to take and copy this entire model. And let's take a look and see what happens if we apply some physically based materials. Now, if you're not familiar with physically based materials, this is a, a kind of an industry-wide protocol that is uh, that allows you to be able to go to a database such as this one, uh, ccotextures.com, and download industry standard kind of um, materials that allow you to be able to apply you know, really realistic materials and textures to your object. Got a little file browser here, and if we go to the top, this is the texture archive that you would download in order to be able to put the proper images into the proper slots. And so I've downloaded some of these materials already, and, uh, and I just want to show you the difference. And so I'm going to hide this guy for now, the old one. I'm just going to hide that. And let's look at this guy here. So I'm going to use Rhino's uh, selection tools in order to be able to apply this. So I'm going to come here and I'm just going to say select objects. And then let's go back up to the top here and I'm going to use this physically based material and I'm going to assign it to there. And you can see right off the bat the realism just goes off the charts. If you look at all the little scratches and details and dents and things like that that the PBR gives you, it, it really kind of increases the realism of the object uh, pretty pretty quickly. So I'm going to go down and use the same thing. I'm going to use the uh, select objects, and then I'm going to apply a physically based material. And you can see the difference on that. We've just got a lot more depth. We've got these little scratches and these details and things like that in it, which are really pretty cool. And actually, I'm going to use a different plastic. Sorry, I wanted to use this one up here instead. Let's use this one. There we go. And you can see that we've got some really subtle surface detail. We've got a little bit of color variation, almost a little bit of modeling in the plastic, and a little bit of detailing. Almost looks like it's got little worn spots on it and things like that. And let's just do our sub-object selections and add the rest of the pieces. So I'm going to grab this and this. I'm going to use a physically based emitter. Then I'm going to go back and assign these objects. Again, shift, control, drag, just to get, grab those faces. Shift, control, click to add that face and that face. And we'll add the physically based material just to those. Bring everything back. And you can see right off the bat the level of realism that we're, that we're, we're looking at just by changing, changing the materials. The handle looks a little bit more real. The metal looks aged. This looks like a paint applied to metal. And you can see a little bit of the difference in how the emitters look. So let's go ahead and run both of those. Now we've got a little bit of depth of field issue here, so let's fix that. Let's go to the rendering. Actually, let's go to the properties here. Let's go to depth of field and let's set our depth of field with manual focus and we're going to pick a focal distance. Actually, let's do this in rendered mode. It goes a lot faster. It's easier to pick. So let's set our manual focus. I want this object to be in focus and I want that object to be in focus. Let's render that and see. You can see that our numbers have changed over in the depth of field box over here, and we should get a better result. There we go. And you can see just the difference already before at 35 samples, you can already see the difference in the reality between the two, between the two objects here. And now the render's finished up, and you can see at 1,000 samples here, we're at about 4 minutes and 37 seconds on my machine. Now I have a graphics card with a lot of CUDA cores. I have an M6000 Quadro in this machine, so um, I've got uh, 3800 or 4300 CUDA cores or something like that. So this machine is particularly well suited for 
ray trace mode uh, because it's CUDA enabled um, for Rhino uh, V7, also V6. But you can see very clearly the difference in, in the two models. The one on the left, which is just using the basic default Rhino materials, looks pretty good and pretty convincing until you compare it to the PBR material one on the right hand side. You can see the handle just has a lot more subtlety and a lot more realism and the metal detail really is a lot more convincing. So I just wanted to show you the some of the new things that are coming up in, in version 7. Uh, ray trace mode which is built on cycles and uh, the addition of the PBR materials which will become available uh, now. Actually if you download uh, the WIP of V7 you can use this now. Uh, we invite you to play with it. Let us know what you think and uh, Happy modeling. I'm Kyle Houchins, and this is Ray Trace Mode for version 7. Thanks.